Okay, here I am again. This, I'm doing a little video this time. This is going to be more about wiring <clears throat> an FC6A, an IDEC PLC. This pretty much applies to the 5 Series 6, I'm sure, even the older ones. <clears throat> this guy at work wanted me to do a video about wiring them up and kind of explain some things, help people along that are actually trying to wire one up to get it to work, to mess around with or whatever, because he's actually building one at home in a suitcase with, I don't know, he's got an HMI in there. He's building like a pretty cool little trainer out of it. His name's Dexter Nolan, by the way. Shout out to Dexter Nolan. Good guy. Anyways, I'm going to go through the manual here. I actually have the FC6A series manual. And I'm going to go through and kind of point out some stuff in it. I may actually later on, not in this video, I may actually get into some video once I get a better video recorder <clears throat> of showing actually how to connect things. But I think I can do a pretty good job of it with this manual. So anyway, this is the standard manual. I'll supply a link in the uh, the um, description of this video to where you can go, and it's got all kinds of literature you can download for the FC6A, the the, uh, the communications manual, the the Wind LDR manual to teach you how to use the ladder instructions, uh, the actual user manual, which this is for the the um, PLC itself. <clears throat> how things work on it. They're pretty informative manuals. They're really good to have. I mean, you can learn a lot by just looking through these manuals because that's what they're made for. <clears throat> anyway, let's get started. Let's get down here and hopefully you can see all this. We're going to go. I'm going to jump down there. I think I was at page 58 where I put some stuff. Here we go. All right. Now, <clears throat> this is how your typical FC6A PLC looks. Okay. Now, this you got to pay attention to. This is an AC power type is what this means is you put AC power into this PLC right here. This terminal here is this terminal. So you're actually putting AC power, a line and a neutral and a ground into this. This has its own power supply <clears throat> in it, okay? It puts out 24 volts across here. So you don't need the power supply for the input. You need power supply for the output if it's a relay output. You can actually come off this power supply to the relay output if you wanted. This one is not a very common type. I, I never use these. The only ones I use are the the uh, 24 volt DC <clears throat> powered ones. Just because of safety reasons. I mean, if you can stay lower voltage, lower voltage safer. It's not as easy to 110 will knock the crap out of you if you touch something. 24 volt, not so much. Anyways, that's what some of these are. Um, that's what that means. You want to make sure you pay attention to that because there's certain terminals on a DC that the, it doesn't have. Like these two terminals right here on the DC unit, they say NA or something like that. If you're not using them or NC or something, I can't remember. But you don't use these anyways on the DC unit. We'll scroll on down here to the DC unit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is a 24 volt DC unit. Same thing. I mean, this is 16 point, but I mean, they got 24 points, 40 points, whatever. They're all basically laid out the same. <clears throat> okay, just to show you now how, how this works. This terminal is this one right here. So this is basically that. Okay. So <clears throat> when you have your 24 volt power supply over here, this power in this unit, you're gonna hook the positive here from your power supply. This, this right here is actually your power supply. If you were to look at that power supply outside, this is the power supply. So you'll hook your positive up from your power supply to here, your negative up to the power to here to your PLC. Okay, now is what this does, <clears throat> This is actually your CPU power. This is what powers the central processing unit and the PLC itself. This does not necessarily power your inputs or outputs unless you have a transistored output. <clears throat> okay, so this will power your unit up. This gets your power, brings it to life, basically, okay? All right, now, all of on these FC6As and 5As, the inputs are on the top, the outputs are on the bottom. Okay, if you want to look, here, I'm going to show you some of the difference. Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between some engineering lingo and some electrician lingo. Engineering lingo confuses the hell out of some people. Confuses the hell out of me a lot. 
So I like electrician lingo. <clears throat> okay. Sink. You have these terms right here. These confuse the hell out of people sometimes. Sink input versus source input. All right. Basically, in the United States, or as far as I know, we most people use sinking input. Sinking input, I call it positive logic. That's what I was taught, being an electrician. Is what I'm doing is I'm sending a positive signal to one of these inputs. Okay. Now for this input to work, let me get rid of that one because we're not going to use that. We're going to use sinking input. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to explain how this works here. Okay, you have a common, you have a negative. This negative coming from your power supply, this right here again is your power supply. Say you have a separate power supply for I.O., what they call inputs and outputs. Sometimes you'll have a power supply just for your CPU, which again is this, and then you'll have a power supply that's just for your I.O., which is your inputs and your outputs, dedicated for those. So your negative from, say, your I.O. power supply or your power supply period, if you're using power supply, your negative is going to go to your common right there, okay? Your positive that's going through your device, whether it's a switch like right here, whether it's a sensor or I don't know why they put a dotted line imaginary switch there, but a switch, push button switch. I mean, think of these as push buttons. We, we see them different in the United States. That's more, I think this is like an IEC symbol for a push button. <clears throat> Basically, you have your power supply, negative coming to common. Your positive comes over here, goes to your switch. Once that switch is pushed, once that arrow, once that switch is pushed down, that positive power goes into I2. That's your input number two of the PLC, right? Okay, so inside of that input of that PLC, there's actually, I don't know if there's a drawing in here. We might get to it if there is. I don't know. But inside of this input, there's actually an LED. There's what this, it's called. They call it an opto isolator. So as what happens, this negative is hooked to one side of your LED. The positive of the LED is hooked to right here, basically. So when this closes and it sends positive to the LED, it lights the LED. Okay, the LED fires, turns on, and there's a receptor on the other side that sees the light that tells the PLC, okay, I2 is on. I'm getting a signal. So that's how that actually works. There's actually a little LED light in there, believe it or not, that turns off and on. <clears throat> it's called an opto-isolator. It keeps your outside world from interfering with the inside world on the PLC. That's the easiest way I can explain that. You have to have the common... You have to have that positive coming into I2. If you don't have that common, that common is a common rail all the way across here to each one of these LEDs inside. If you do not have your negative hooked to your PLC, that common, that LED is not going to light. It's just like any other light bulb. It has to have both sides. It has to have a positive and a negative. Okay, you have your negative hooked in. Your positive is coming through your switch and connected to the positive on the LED, whether it's a sensor or whatever. And that turns that LED light on on your input. Like I say, sync wiring is what I always use. I call it positive logic because I am feeding a positive into my input. It's positive logic. Negative logic is what um, I think they use it in Europe a lot. I don't know. I call them a, I use positive logic. All of these anyways. Also, on your, your IDEC PLCs, your inputs, they're either or. You can wire them either positive or negative. They'll go both ways. So you can wire them sync or source. It doesn't matter. But always wire mine as positive logic or sync input. Okay, now it's a little different story on your outputs. <clears throat> on your outputs, you can either have a relay output. All right, so on your relay output, right here, this is a relay output. <clears throat> okay, so this common, it doesn't really care. You can feed a negative into that common or a positive into that common. Because whatever you're feeding into that common is what's going to come out of there. This L is your load. <clears throat> so think of that L as your solenoid. Uh, you don't want to run a solenoid straight off of a PLC. I wouldn't. I mean, I would rather let a small card relay or something like that take the hit of the solenoid opening and closing. 
instead of a uh, instead of the PLC itself. <clears throat> but this L is your load, whatever it might be, whether it's a relay card, whether it's an ice cube relay, whether it's a solenoid, whether it's an indicator light, whatever it might be. So the negative is hooked to this side of your load. The positive is common coming through here in this Q0. Think of that as a normally open little relay in there. And once the PLC tells Q0 to close, and now it continues this circuit, this positive comes through, comes back through your load and hits your load and turns whatever it is on. So basically, this is just a switch. That's all that is. That's just a little relay switch in there that's turning off and on. And that's why I say on the relays, you can feed them either way. You could feed a negative through here if you wanted to and take your positive this side of the load and you could switch your negative. To me, it's always better to switch your positive. Positive, you got a little fuse right there. Something shorts out, it blows the fuse, basically. <clears throat> okay, now here's where you get kind of hinky if you have transistor outputs. Okay, you have a K1CE. This is sync. P1CE. The P is a source. <clears throat> okay. Basically, is what you're doing on your load. You have a negative. This is still positive logic. I like to use, if I'm going to use a, a transistor output, I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to use that one because I like positive logic. I want a positive signal. So basically, I'm going to get a positive out of this PLC. If Q4 comes on, I'm getting 24 volts DC positive coming out to check. I have my negative over here. It's hooked to the other side of my solenoid, my relay, my ice cube, my indicator light, whatever it may be. Turns it off and on. This is the the way that I was just taught to do it. I'm, there's different configurations. Like I say, there's a, there's sink and there's source. Source is the one that I prefer and the one that I was taught to use. So <clears throat> that's pretty much how that wires up. So I mean, you're going to take. Um, your common in there. I mean, this is your common is your positive. So you're going to take a positive because this actually powers this through a transistor. So you have to have that positive there. This is your power supply, right? So you fuse it coming into your common. It comes across in the common rail inside of here pretty much and feeds it out through the transistors. The transistor is just a digital switch pretty much, electronic switch. It's going to turn it off and on. Instead of having an actual relay, it's an actual transistor that turns off and on. Okay, and then you have to have the negative to the actual, the negative side of it to power it also. So don't forget to put that in there. And your negatives are pretty much common to all of your negative sides of your loads outside. Let's see if I can find something here that's going to show you the opto isolators. I don't know. I haven't scrolled through here a whole lot in a while. Let's see. You know what, let me go back to the front and see if maybe it's, we'll get into the, uh, the old product spec station with wiring. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to mess around in here a whole lot because I'm going to give you a link to this where you can download it. It's real good information to get in there and look at anyway. It tells you all the ratings for amperages and stuff, how much they will handle. Um, cycles and I mean like if you're going to use like a um, a transistor output is good for something that has a whole lot of really fast cycles all the time because they will last a long 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 time versus a physical relay which is a relay output is actually moving parts transistor is not so a transistor output over um, say IDEX uh, RV8 relay cards perfect they last forever and then you burn out a relay card you chunk it and you put a new one in there and you have a lot of cycles on your plc on the output now if you're not going to have a lot of cycles then maybe a relay output would be beneficial they're a little cheaper but just remember that that uh it's a moving part it does go out quicker so it's something to think about when you're choosing a uh, plc uh, my, my preference is to burn out a ten dollar relay card and then uh, buy a new one versus burn out a $500, you know, one of the transistors on a $500 PLC and have to switch outputs over in the program and, you know, have one that's not good and 
blah, blah, blah. You know how it works, but there's all part numbers and stuff. I guess maybe there's not anything in here as far as the... It's in here somewhere, I'm sure. I just don't know exactly where it is about the... Uh, whoop. I seen something right there. Let's see where that was. There we go. Opto isolator. All right. There's your LED. This is your 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 um, circuit right here. Lights up. Turns that on pretty much. Photocoupler. They're calling a photocoupler. Anyways, go through here and it'll it'll kind of show you some stuff. Of how how the opto isolator works. But anyhow, anyway, that's the end of this video. This is a nice short and sweet one, but if you have any questions, give me a shout. I'll help you out if I can. <clears throat> and I keep pushing. I'm going to start pushing it. Get on that iDeck forum and subscribe to it. need more traffic on there, a lot more traffic, man. We get a lot of stuff learned if a lot more people were involved in it. So get on there and subscribe to my channel, too. I'll do what I can. I'm not the best in the world, but I'll do what I can to help people. Thank you.